Roanoke, Virginia, the largest municipality in southwest Virginia, located along the Blue Ridge Mountains at the foot of the Shenandoah Valley, became the commercial and cultural center for the region. Due to its natural resources and environment, as well as its location, the area became a crossroads for trails and routes. In the 18th century, the Great Wagon Road ran from Pennsylvania in the north through the Carolinas in the south. The Wilderness Road ran from the Tidewater and Piedmont in the east to the western frontier and passed through the future site of where the city of Roanoke runs through the Blue Ridge Mountains. After the Civil War, it became a railroad center. Industry grew with the railroad. Rapid population growth increased the city's necessity to expand into the farming land southeast of the city. Southeast Roanoke, over time, absorbed a major portion of the laboring population and Southeast became a neighborhood community near the railroad and other manufacturing areas. The first residents of Southeast were no doubt Native Americans, also known as American Indians. At one time, this valley contained a large glade with minerals and salt rising to its surface. Salt that is a basic need for human and game animals. These inland salt marshes were known as lick. No doubt, early man followed the animals into the Roanoke Valley. These animal and human trails formed a natural crossroads near the center of the valley in and around those salt marshes. Using modern landmarks to locate this area, the area that was then called the Great Lick would be at the intersection of Orange Avenue Northeast and Holland's Road Northeast. It extended down to approximately 2nd Street and Shenandoah Avenue Southwest. The marsh was drained and channeled by the railroad in the 1880s. Native Americans lived here in pre-Columbian times. Caution is used by today's archaeologists and about identifying the native tribal origins from prehistory. They do know they hunted deer and small game. They fished and gathered wild food stuff, as well as farm maize and other crops. They seem to have migrated in and out of the valley as food source dictated. It's thought they burned vast woodland areas north of the lick to provide a pasture and forage for large game such as deer and bison. Artifacts along the banks of the Roanoke River near Tinker Creek and then again 13th Street and Bennington Avenue, also along Wise Avenue and section of Roanoke near the Indian Village housing development, show evidence that the area was once inhabited by large First Native American settlements in the neighborhood that became Southeast Roanoke. In the 1740s, settlers of the British colonies of Virginia, Maryland, and Pennsylvania began to move into the Valley of Virginia. During that period, a group of Pennsylvania colonists, including Mark Evans, Thomas Tosh, and his brother Tasker, migrated into the Roanoke Valley. Thomas and Tasker claimed large tracts of land that would become downtown Roanoke and the southeast neighborhood. Thomas Tosh established his home on what became King George Avenue in 1767. It was called Rock of Ages, and it was said to be the first locally built brick home. He owned and operated a ford on the Roanoke River. It was near the present-day Franklin Road Bridge and a landmark in colonial times in the early days of the New Republic. Tasker Tosh's land was on what would become Jefferson Street and Elm Avenue southeast. Both brothers sold land to the Tinsley family, and eventually Tinsley sold to the Terry family. Terry family added on to Tasker's original hilltop home in southeast Roanoke. The Terrys called it Elmwood. Its grounds and gardens became Elmwood Park in early Roanoke. The 
Terry family's holdings made up large portions of the Belmont section of the southeast neighborhood, as well as today's downtown and market area. The Terry family home served as a Roanoke Public Library for several years. Both Tosh's homes were torn down in the late 20th century. Charles Ferguson owned large tracts of land on the north bank of the Roanoke River in the 1700s. It changed hands several times until the 1830s. The area was referred to as the Bottoms, and in 1830s the land was sold to the Langhord family who were operators of the Cloverdale Iron Furnace near Daleville, Virginia. In 1833, Langhord sold the land to George P. Taylor of Richmond County, Virginia. In the 1840s, Mr. Taylor hired David Darley to construct a mansion first called Runoak and eventually became Buena Vista Plantation on Pinmar Avenue Southeast. This land became the neighborhoods of Morningside Heights and Buena Vista Heights. The Buena Vista Mansion served as a recreation center from the late 1930s until the early 21st century. It is in private hands again and in the process of restoration by the owner. At some point after the Civil War, the Myers family purchased tracts of land from the Talos as well as from the George Carr Plantation. This was on the west bank of Tinker Creek and the north bank of the Roanoke River. This area was around the present day Fallon Park area. It included the land that would make up Waverly and Kenwood Boulevard areas all the way to the Benton Town limits. This area is well covered in books available for sale or research. Raymond P. Barnes wrote a comprehensive and somewhat personal history of Roanoke City in the late 1960s. Mr. Barnes' book is available through the Virginia Room at the main public library of Roanoke City. Now out of print, it can only be accessed on site. It is a large work based on his recollections as a longtime resident and his access to the Roanoke Times and World News Archives. His accounts of neighborhoods in Roanoke are vivid and frank. Clara White offers details of early Roanoke homesteaders in her book, Roanoke, 1742 to 1982. It's available through the History Museum of Western Virginia's gift shop and bookstore. This is a concise history from colonial times to the early 1980s in Roanoke. when the railroads came to Roanoke, the south and north sides of the railroad tracks began to boom in construction. To the northeast and northwest, the old town of Gainsborough saw vast construction. On the south side of the tracks and east of Jefferson Street, the neighborhood of southeast began to take shape on streets with names like Norfolk, Campbell, Church, Wise, Taswell, Holiday, Elm, Bullet, Albemarle, Highland, Mountain, Stewart, Dale, Jamison, and Belmont. The downtown area began to cross the tracks at Holiday, now Williamson Road southeast. Home construction consisted mostly of simple gable fronted and row house styles. Grocery stores and other neighborhood businesses were mingled among residential structures. In the early 1900s, the American Visco Corporation bought several acres of land on the north bank of the Roanoke River. The Hoover family, who owned large parts of the former Buena Vista plantation, sold the land that made up the site. It was well suited for a large industrial site where the American Visco Company, the world's largest producer of rayon fabrics. The Rogers family had inherited the Taylor Buena Vista estates. They would benefit from the development of the second housing boom. The old Hoover homes still stand in a block between Montrose Avenue and Pinmar Avenue Southeast. The Rogers home is now a private home at 1030 Pinmar Avenue Southeast. The Roanoke Electric and Rail Company streetcars helped Southeast become a convenient residential area. 
Frame houses and bungalows were built besides large Victorians. They were large four square duplex houses scattered over the neighborhood. Streetcar lines ran through them, central streets. Butcher shops, groceries, repair shops, hardware stores were placed throughout the neighborhood. Some houses were innate or others were simple. Sandstone and granite curbings were boarded along cobbled brick streets and sidewalks. Varied type of structures could be seen within a few blocks. The tracks of the Norfolk and Western and the connecting line of the Virginia railroads formed the boundary markers of the southwest and southeast neighborhoods, more so than the Jefferson streets alone. All houses close to the downtown area maintained a larger value no matter which side of the tracks or river they were built. The real estate adage of location, location, location can still be verified today by housing costs in both areas. In a turn of the century house in Southeast bring a considerable less price to the exact same house in Old Southwest. This applies when all other things are equal in condition and lot size. Loft type homes and offices near downtown have become a recent trend. Southeast warehouse buildings built in those early days are seeing benefits from the real estate renovation and recycling. This area has experienced change in commercial and industrial employment and businesses. The automation of the railroad and the closing of the American Visco plant in the late 1950s were traumatic to the city and all its neighborhoods. The nature of the neighborhood changed little in the last several decades. Old and modern well-crafted homes retain their intrinsic value. The area is now home to a diverse community of people and homes. Southeast is now home to public housing, antebellum mansions, Victorians, bungalows, and old farm houses. It has retained its hardworking reputation. Like some older urban neighborhoods, Southeast is haunted by an old reputation from the past. Entra neighborhoods and ethnic rivalries have been a part of the urban legend and fact in many cities for centuries. Southeast of today provides value for all in a historic community that is not bound by the past mistakes by striving toward a better future.